Oh, well, I, I'm amazed by this call, Lurdy. I didn't intend to talk about drugs today, but I went with my emotions on the show I saw last night on uh, heroin addiction in Cape Cod, and I, I said, you know, I don't have much sympathy for the heroin addicts. They were all self-indulgent children. I had sympathy for their mothers whose hearts were broken. That's who I cared about. And so I thought we should talk about it, and I never expected to get a call like you. I don't know how to tell you how many nasty emails I get on Facebook from from potheads who are, who are so addicted to the drug that whenever marijuana is mentioned, they become crazy in supporting it. Why do you think that is? Why do they think they have an obligation to support the use of marijuana? I believe I believe they they attribute the marijuana to opening their consciousness when in all reality it's it's more like a trick on the mind. They these same people are the same people that complain and yell at, you know, people that are overweight, people that abuse cheeseburgers, but in their own reality they're doing the exact same thing with a different substance. It's a different variable that they're using. Yeah, I remember that in the in the sixties when pot entered my life, it was because people said pot is a reality trip, pot opens your mind, pot gives you a clearer view of the real world. It was all rubbish. It was totally absolutely it was all big lies. Well, Lurdy, thank you for being uh who you are. I mean, I don't know what else to say. You sound like a wonderful person who knows who you are, and you don't need anyone to tell you who you are, but you know, you basically just gave a testimonial here to millions of people on the Savage Nation. Who You may have saved many lives just now. You may have turned people around. And I want to send you a gift, which is the only thing I can send you right now. I don't have any ties or footwear or mustache wax. I write books. Government Zero goes to you. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Welcome back. And uh, we're talking about the heroin addiction in America based upon a, an HBO special I saw last night. And I'm asking why no candidates talking about the drug addiction problem in America. And then I was reading the news today and I saw who was killed in Afghanistan, who in the special forces, a very brave, wonderful man uh, named Sergeant McClintock. He's actually a human being with a name killed by the Taliban. Now, what is Afghanistan and are men being killed there have to do with this? Well, you may not know it, but Afghanistan is the heroin capital of the world. Where do you think the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, get their money to support their terrorist activities, including ISIS, probably in the long Silk Road drug trade, which is now scour a scourge on the entire earth? So, you know, you say, well, how is it related? What does it mean? You figure it out. Figure out why we're still in Afghanistan and see which side we're on. See which side we're on. Sergeant McClintock was just killed in Afghanistan. Before that, U.S. Marine Lieutenant Corporal Gregory Buckley Jr., a human being killed in Afghanistan. See who they are. Why are we in Afghanistan? Does it have anything to do with drugs? Some say yes. Some say terrorism. Some say they're one and the same. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Well, they call themselves the Grateful Dead. There's a lot of deadheads out there, probably all working in the Obama administration. I don't know how a deadhead could love America. I mean, the words themselves tell you who they are. But nevertheless, okay, great music, wonderful. It has no effect on the human mind. No. Sugar has no effect on the person. Fat has no effect on the person. No. Artificial colors and flavors have no effect on the person. Music has no effect on the person. No, not at all. We're all free spirits to do as we wish. So children have been addicted for many reasons. The drug culture, the music, the films, every movie Martin Scorsese puts out, and a great filmmaker he is, is either filled with violence, drug use, same with the other one, Harvey Weinstein. Every movie Weinstein puts out has a gun in it. He's the most anti-gun uh, producer in Hollywood. Hates guns. Hates guns, Harvey Weinstein. Hates guns. Hasn't read the article I posted about the Bielski brothers on my Facebook page, how guns saved 20,000 Jews. I guess that missed Harvey Weinstein's mother. 
who was probably a fan of the show somewhere in, in, in America. She ought to call him up and say, moron, listen to Savage. Maybe you'll learn something and stop producing that pornography. You're a shame for the family. But okay, I have a fantasy about it. Movies, film, theater, everything is the drug culture, right? Drug, sex, and rock and roll. Isn't that the, mo isn't that the, more the mores of the 60s? Drugs, sex, and rock and roll. Well, look where that's gotten us. And enter the, in this vacuum, what enters the, into the vacuum? What enters the vacuum? The most fanatical throwbacks in the history of the world. The, the throwbacks who think that cutting someone's head off is less of a crime against God than having sex with someone. This is how sick they are. In other words, let's put it on, on a scale of 1 to 10. What's worse, having sex with eight people or killing somebody, cutting their head off? What's worse, having uh, sex with someone or raping children as ISIS does? Do I have to tell you what's going on? The phonies in ISIS that make believe they're such holy rollers? It's all a fake act? I don't care how many times they bray to Mecca. I don't care. Take a look at what they do. Not that they get on their hands and knees and bray to Mecca. Look who they are. Look at this filth. What, because they bray to Mecca and hold the Quran? I'm supposed to say that they're holy men? Have you noticed how the left, which hates religion, have you noticed how the left, which has denigrated Christianity for at least 50 years, is oh so impressed with Islam? Have you noticed this? And you can't put two and two together yet. Have you noticed the phony women's movement? which was quick to criticize anyone who said one word about them, has said nothing about the industrial-level rape of young girls by ISIS or about the, the New Year's Eve rapes by Muslims in Germany. They've said nothing. Ask yourself why. What does this have to do with the issue at hand, which is drug addiction, the addictive, the scourge of drug addiction in America? It's all interrelated. It's all related to the mother of all topics, which is the disease, the ultimate disease, which is liberalism. Liberalism is a mental disorder. And once that disease enters your soul, the rest falls like dominoes. And the only cure for liberalism is rationality. I have found that most liberals, as rich as they may be, as smart as they may be, some of them, are immune to, to reason. Their minds are made up. Don't confuse them with any facts. They don't want to hear about Vostok ice core samples. They just know that the, the earth is dying from global warming. That's all they know. You show them fact after fact after fact, they don't want to know it. And then they'll tell you that they earn more money than you, so therefore they're smarter than you. Well, by that definition, Hitler was smarter than almost everybody in Europe at the time. He had more power and more money than anybody that he stole from everybody else. So you can't use money as a, a metric of how smart someone is, can you? I've met, I've met some very smart people who are poor. And I met some of the dumbest people I've ever met in my life are very wealthy. The dumbest people I've ever met, some of them are very wealthy. I never met such idiots in my entire life. Now, because they make big money, they think that they know more about your field than you do. And they have, they have evidence in their own brain. And you give them facts, they don't want to hear it. So, DRC Radio, John, go ahead. You're up on the Savage Nation. What's your topic? I was calling about um, drug addiction and why we don't hear about it now on the campaign trail. And I believe that's because we don't want to ever judge someone. We can't judge what they do. So that if you call it... Oh, in other words, if, someone's, if someone gets up like I do and say I have no sympathy for junkies, that it's their fault that they're junkies, you mean I'm being judgmental? Exactly. You can't do that. You can't judge other people. Well, but aren't Muslims the most judgmental people in the world right now? Don't they judge everyone else and say that they're not pure enough? Yes, but more important. It, is, it, all of Islam is about judgmentalism, isn't it? How can we have nothing to say about that? That speaks to a different issue, and that is if they're anti-American, the left love them. See, it's like all anything that is anti-American is okay. Your iPhone, your iPhone is ringing. I think it's uh, Ray Donovan calling. That's that's uh, a buddy of my calling. So, but so that <laughs> deal, you see, you can't judge people. You can't say you shouldn't be using drugs. Well, I know drugs. it's only. Uh, by the way, it's only judgmentalism that can save America. We need to start to becoming. We need to start to become judgmental again. All of use some judgment. In other words, use some judgment. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm asking is use some judgment. It's that simple. Thank you for the call, John. 
Uh, take your call right now. It may be the uh, the drug supplier. I'm joking. Your, your delivery may have arrived at the front door, the pizza, whatever you ordered. WJR, now there's a station for you. John blew off his friend to keep talking to you. John blew off his friend to keep talking to you. I'm sorry that I hung up, John. Uh, let's go on to the next caller, WJR in Detroit, one of the greatest stations in the world. Robin, thanks for calling. What's on your mind tonight? My topic is on drug addiction, and I think I have <clears throat> one of the reasons why it's such a problem, and that is because, like you said earlier, it comes from a disease of liberalism. We have to pacify everybody. And I'm a registered nurse, and I actually work in uh, surgery. People are having surgery. I work in the recovery room where they wake up. And nowadays, everybody gets a big, high dose of drugs for a little tiny bit of surgery. Yes, I'm... Oh, what do, they, what do they put them on, oxycodone? Oh, yeah. They, they, people today, people go home with a simple knee arthroscopy that might take 30, 40 minutes surgery, scraping out a little bit of the car... The, cartilage and the, um, you know, the stuff in there. And it's not, it's little, three little tiny incisions. Surgery isn't as hurtful as it used to be because there are smaller incisions now. But they're getting bigger drugs for these smaller incisions. In 1986, my husband was mm -hmm. discharged from the hospital with two broken legs, shattered legs, and pins in them and everything, and a broken neck with Motrin for his at-home pain medicine. Today, oh, I remember those days. They would tell you to go home and take a Motrin. I remember that. Today, they get a little knee scope or a cystoscopy, which is looking in the bladder. And seriously, it takes sometimes probably less than 10 minutes. And they go home with OxyContin or Percocet. And I'm so, why, so why are they giving them such powerful opiates? What's that? Why are they dispensing such powerful opiates for such simple surgeries? Because people are demanding it. People are, we have to, we, as nurses, we have to treat people's pain. It, there was like a shift in this where pain become the most important thing, and the pain is what, and it's, the pain is what the person says it is. But there's so it's, things, a nation, it's a nation of weaklings, in other words. They don't want to feel a, a, a scintilla of pain. They don't want to have any emotional disturbance. And so you have to treat that, is that it? Right, and common sense tells you when you have surgery, we cut your skin, it's going to hurt. You're going to hurt. You're going to have to get through the hurt. There's other ways besides these powerful narcotics to get you through the pain. What so they it's like telling a patient if they come in for these unnecessary procedures, many of them are unnecessary, build up the bill, they're going to get a big dose of candy like good little children when they leave, which is a little sack of pills to go home and, and, and take for a few days. So who makes money on that? The hospital, the doctor, and the pharmaceutical industry, correct? Yep. All right, so it's all profit-driven. This is what happens when a system becomes overly dependent upon profits, and it's been said before, I don't want to just preach to the choir, but that is, is exactly what is ruin, ruining medicine, which is this obsession with the bottom line and profits. It's what ruined the law. It's what ruining medicine is ruining every aspect of our society. I'm not going to sit here and preach as an anti-capitalist because I'm not, but there's such a thing as greed. When greed enters the picture, that's no longer capitalism. That's something else. And I think that the, the greedy nature of the entire medical system has something to do with this addiction to these opiates. Right. Doctor, WABC, Tony, welcome to the Savage Nation from Line 1. What's on your mind tonight? Uh, on addiction, Dr. Savage, I've been an addiction doctor for more than 10 years. There's only three things that usually get a person off of heroin. Going to prison, losing the right to see your grandchildren, or your wife or mistress is leaving you. Other than that, once you're on heroin, you're hooked. So you, no, you really know. You know from the reality of the streets. And you're saying only punishment stops the crime. One way or another, the punishment, you don't get to see your kids or your grandchildren. Your girlfriend or your wife is leaving or you're going to jail and you want to stop because you're scared. Tony, let me ask you, Doc, did they still give that powerful uh, treatment for heroin addiction that I was mentioning, that they take in a liquid, they have to come into the treatment clinic? I, What was it called? I forgot it already. I don't remember. Methadone is one. Methadone. one is, is methadone so still used? Because I know methadone was being sold on the streets just like heroin was because it turned out to give people a high. Do they still use methadone? Yep, and they still use now Suboxone, which is made by one of the other drug companies. 
וואו. 